Vishveshwaraya Industrial and Technological Museum dedicates this film to this noble soul Mokshagundam Vishveshwaraya, an eminent engineer, a statesman par excellence, a grand visionary, a strong votary of industrialization, architect of modern Karnataka. He also played a key role in the building of modern India. We see a very clear influence of Western idea of modernity in the foundation of modern Indian state today. Bharat Ratna Sir Mokshigundam Vishweshuraya, one of the legendary visionaries who sowed the seeds of modernity and we are reaping the fruits today. The story of illustrious men and women cannot be retold. Like the great outstanding mountain peaks, such great people invite description but elude definition. This is the story of one such legendary genius of India. The year was 1861, the day 15th September and the place was the foothills of the scenic Nandi Hills. In the small town of Muddenahalli was born a child who would grow up to become the father of the modern state of Mysore. That child was Yam Vishweshwaraya. Vishweshwaraya was born into a pious Telugu-speaking Brahmin household. His father, Srinivasa Shastri, was a Sanskrit scholar. He passed away when Vishweshwaraya was just 15 years old. From then on, it was up to his mother Venkata Lakshmamma to get her son educated. Although the family struggled to make ends meet, their commitment to education never faltered. He completed his primary education in the nearby town of Chikabalapur. Sir M. Vishweshwaraya studied here and he completed his higher education. Myself and my staff members were very proud enough, even my students also were very proud enough, we are part and parcel of this institution. Vishweshwaraya was a brilliant student. He moved to Bangalore to continue his education in high school and college. He completed his BA at Bangalore's Central College. A merit scholarship allowed him to continue to study. He joined the College of Science in Pune an institution which is now known as the College of Engineering. He studied civil engineering and graduated with the top rank in 1885 after which he began his first job. The coveted post of assistant engineer was reserved for the engineering topper of the Bombay University. He started his career as an assistant engineer in the city of Nasik. He quickly rose to the post of sanitary engineer for the entire state of Bombay. Sir M.V. was invited to join the Irrigation Commission of India. It was during this time that he excelled as an engineer. He made outstanding contributions to the Bombay state. Uh, to begin with, he was uh, given the greatest challenge of uh, dealing with the flood problem of uh, Kadakawasla a reservoir which supplies uh, water to Pune city. He thought probably by uh, designing automatic gate this problem could be solved and uh, it worked very well and it is this automatic gate at Karakavasla uh, that gave him uh, a very big name throughout the world. He developed a complex system of irrigation that increased the storage capacity of a reservoir without increasing the dam's height. This was called the Automatic Weir Water Floodgate System. This animation explains how this system works. The system is developed based on float and dead weight and pulley and chain. A well and eight gates constitute this system. At this stage, the float is at the bottom of the well and the dead weight is at the top. Another set of chain and pulley is connected to the gates which are closed. The well has an inlet pipe one feet diameter connected at the bottom that would allow water from the reservoir into the well at full reservoir level. When the water level in the lake reaches the maximum permissible level, water rushes into the well and the float rises up. 
the dead weight comes down, the gates open and water is discharged. Likewise, when the reservoir level falls, the well gets emptied and the gates close. Everything comes back to initial position. It was first installed at the Khadakwasla Reservoir in Pune in 1903. He later obtained a patent for this marvel of engineering. In 1909, the Nizam of Hyderabad sought his expertise and service in order to protect his capital city from the flash floods of River Musi. Hyderabad had been dealing with devastating floods. In the Kosawadi area alone, more than 2,000 people had drowned. Vishweshwaraya conducted a survey and built two reservoirs across this river, the Hussein Sagar and the Himayat Sagar, which protect the city from floods even today. By this time, Sir MV had attained a legendary status for his expertise. It was time for service to the motherland. The Maharaja of Mysore appointed him the chief engineer of Mysore state. Another enduring contribution of Vishweshwarayas during this time was the Krishnaraja Sagar reservoir that he planned and built across the river Kaveri. At the time, it was the largest dam built in Asia. Looking at the dimensions of the dam gives us an idea of the sheer magnitude of Sir M. Vishweshwaraya's accomplishment in bringing it to fruition. At a height of 130 feet, a length of 2.8 kilometers with 171 iron gates, out of which 48 are the patented gates of Sir M. Vishweshwaraya. The reservoir completely transformed the state. The arid land could now be irrigated through artificially built canals. This made it possible for the farmers of the area to grow excess paddy and sugar cane which led to a flourishing sugar industry in the adjoining district of Mandya. This built up the industry so much that it is now called the Sakkare Nadu or Sugar City. The reservoir remains a lifeline to this part of the state and is the main source of drinking water for all of Mysore city and almost the whole of Bangalore city. Krishnaraja Sagar Dam is locally known as Kannambadi Katte. It took 20 years to construct from 1911 to 1932. The enchanting Brindavan Gardens nestled here is a popular tourist spot. Mahatma Gandhiji once said that Krishnaraja Sagar alone would immortalize Vishweshwaraya. He is still revered by the people of the region. Sir M. Vishweshwaraya literally transformed the lives of the people like no other had. Impressed by his work, experience, expertise, his knowledge, his personality and statesmanship, the Maharaja of Mysore elevated him to the post of Divan in 1912. Sir M. V. was the Divan of Mysore for seven years. He literally transformed Mysore into modern industrial state and truly came to be known as the father of modern Mysore state. They say that power corrupts, but a person's character is only truly put to the test when he is in power. Before accepting the position of Divan of Mysore, Vishweshwaraya invited all of his relatives for dinner. He told them very clearly that he would accept the prestigious office but on condition that none of them would approach him for favors. It was during this time that his statesmanship and administrative capabilities came to the fore. He put the economy of the state into a government-driven planned economy mode. He equipped the state with modern industries for the changing times. He believed that modern industry was the necessary engine for the progress of the state. He also encouraged private investment in industry. His motto was, industrialize or perish. Many of the leading industries of the state owe their existence to Vishweshwaraya. Sandalwood was abundant, so he started the sandal oil factory. 
He also started the Mysore Soap Factory, which is an icon of the state even today. It is an ISO 9001 company with a turnover of more than 200 crores. As a long-time advisor to the Tata Iron and Steel Factory, Vishveshwaraya concentrated on the iron ore deposits in the state. He started the Mysore Iron and Steel Works in Bhadravati. He started a bank for the state. The Bank of Mysore Limited, which today is a nationalized bank, the State Bank of Mysore, having more than 700 branches offering wide range of services to the customers. He voluntarily retired from the service of the Mysore state in 1919. Being a karma yogi, Vishveshwaraya refused to rest even after he retired as Divan of Mysore state. His relationship with the state remained cordial despite his differences with the government. The Mysore Iron and Steel Works that he started during the tail end of his tenure as the Divan of the state under his leadership, the industry firmly established itself and flourished. Vishveshwaraya donated the salary he earned as the chairman of this industry over a period of six years to an occupational training institute. It was with this corpus fund that the Sri Jayachamarajendra Polytechnic Institute in Bangalore was able to run. Today, it is one of the premier polytechnic institutes in the country. Sarim Vishveshwaraya also continued to aid the development of the state as an independent advisor. He was instrumental in the development of the water supply system for Bangalore. Vishveshwaraya also conducted a study and prepared a report recommending the industrialization of rural areas which Mysore state accepted and later implemented. His counsel was highly sought after all over the country. He made significant contributions to the town planning and water supply efforts in many cities such as Surat, Pune, Bhopal, Baroda, Nagpur, Gwalior, Indore, Kolhapur and Ahmednagar, not to mention Bangalore, Belgaum, Bijapur and Dharwad. His other achievements included a railway bridge in Bihar across River Ganga, Mahanadi flood control work in Orissa and so on. As a person who believed that industrialization was the only way forward for the nation, he formed the All India Manufacturers Organization in 1941. He encouraged industry to adopt more modern technology and expand their horizons. He was involved with all of these activities until his last breath. His motto was industrialize or perish. He firmly believed that India could immensely benefit from the knowledge and experience of prosperous Western nations. He toured many of these developed countries. He was especially impressed by Japan and hoped India would follow their example. Vishveshwaraya was also a prolific writer. He wrote several books and pamphlets. The uniting theme of all his writings was nation building. Almost every university of the time wanted to confer him honorary doctoral degrees. The universities of Allahabad, Andhra, Bombay, Calcutta, Patna, Mysore and Varanasi to name a few. Many foreign institutions also honored him with laurels for his expertise and contribution. He was awarded honorary membership of the London Institute of Civil Engineers for an unbroken stint of 50 years. In 1915, while he was the Divan of Mysore, Vishveshwaraya was made Knight Commander of the Order of the Indian Empire by the British for his myriad contributions to the public good. The highest honor that an Indian citizen could receive. Independent India honored its proud son with the highest civilian honor, the Bharat Ratna in 1955. In the citation, he was hailed as the father of the idea of planned development in India.
His birth centenary was celebrated as a festival of Mother India at Lal Bagh in Bangalore in 1961. Jawaharlal Nehru, the then Prime Minister of the country, flew down to honour this great son of India. Unaffected by all these accolades, he lived on without any grandeur until his last breath in his old house at Bangalore. Sarim Vishveshwaraya passed away as a centurion on the 14th of April 1962. He was cremated at Muddena Halli as per his wishes where he was born. There is a memorial to him in Muddena Halli. In his last will and testament, if you really see, it is very clear that no money of his, I think it was around 30 or 32,000, was left behind him with the State Bank of Mysore. Not one rupee was given to the family, but it all went to his driver, his secretary, his staff. He said they deserved it. May he remains an inspiration to young and old. But if there was a man to whom the work was religion, it was Sir Vishweshwaraya. Vishweshwaraya's legacy is a part of the collective soul of modern India. Every year, the 15th of September is celebrated as Engineer's Day. Sir M. Vishweshwaraya, the oldest surviving icon from 20th century Karnataka. Enthusiasts of industry see in him an early champion of modern industry. In today's world, people sick of corruption remember Sir M. V. with utmost respect and fondness for probity and long for such men in public life. Sir M. V. A legacy which has stood the test of time. None of us will ever have the privilege of interacting with the great man. But his voice as preserved in this recording will continue to inspire generations to come. Along with these recordings, his memory is kept alive through his collected memorabilia. This is about as close as we will ever get to Sir M. Vishweshwaraya, a visionary, educator, nation builder and possibly the greatest engineer India has ever produced.